So Hellfire triggers have been making a bit of a splash lately. Is this the target of some new ATF bullying? Is it schizoid insane boomer ramblings? Perhaps more gun tuber overreaction? Or perhaps a little bit of all of it? Today we're going to talk about Hellfire triggers, what they are, what they aren't, and what the ATF appears to be getting up to with regard to them. Let's get stuck in. All right, this week I got a few calls from people who may or may not have had various Hellfire triggers and are good and proper freaked out by some recent YouTube videos and, and news that was going around. The short version here is that ATF has determined one variant of the Hellfire to be a machine gun, this being the Hellfire V2, and have sent a cease and desist letter to Hellfire and purportedly seized some of them from Hellfire's distributing arm. Of course, you know I disagree with ATF determinations almost as a matter of course, but there's some nuance here and we're going to dig in further to the docs later in the video. The videos I'm talking about, talking about this trigger, were they were pretty terribly vague and in some instances misleading. They were referring to unaffected Hellfire products as subject to this current ATF course of action. Now, I've been aware of the Hellfire brand name for quite some time. Anyone who's perused gun shows or read gun magazines from the 90s onwards has seen their interesting ads. I dug a little bit while I was researching for this video, and I actually found some very interesting, and to be frank, hilarious stuff. So I want to start here by talking a little bit about the history of Hellfire triggers and its new vaguely manic tendencies. Again, way back in the day, the original Hellfire trigger system was introduced. It clamps to the trigger guard and has a torsion spring with a little finger that presses forward on the rear of your trigger. So calling it a, a trigger or a trigger system, it, it's kind of a misnomer because this doesn't actually replace the trigger. It just kind of sort of mushes forward on it. The effect is a very snappy and firm trigger reset with the added bonus of making your trigger pull almost unbearably miserable. So these original designs were basically bump fire enhancers, and that's kind of what they were marketed as. You'd need a weak grip with the firing hand and a push with the off hand, and certainly couldn't fire effectively from the shoulder. Of course, the marketing didn't exactly reflect this, as uh, we can see some of their stuff is pretty incredibly misleading, you know, showing the firearm being discharged from the shoulder. But... Whether these actually made bump firing easier or not aside, because it's unclear, the marketing of these was aggressive enough that they became fairly popular in the 90s. They gained particular notoriety in 1993 when a gunman used one of them in a shooting at a law office in San Francisco. This being a pre-PLCAA, Protection of Lawful Commerce and Arms Act era, the victims and their families sued all of the companies that made the equipment that the shooter used, including Intratech and Hellfire Systems. This original company, Hellfire Systems, went bankrupt in 1994. Whether this was as a direct result of the lawsuit is unclear. Shortly thereafter, the product resurfaced under a couple of different companies. It is now settled with Rock and Lock, the grizzled, mentally ill anti-hero of today's story. In the intervening years, Rock and Lock came out with two more items it branded as Hellfire Triggers. The Hellfire Gen 2, which goes around the rifle's grip with a nub to press the trigger forward and open cell foam at the rear, uh, and some other stuff. Again, that's the one that is the subject of this ATF action, and we'll talk about it more later. Uh, but then later on, the Hellfire Stealth, which preloads the sear on an AR trigger in one of the dumbest ways conceivable. The real interesting part of this story to me is the website these products were advertised on and the marketing materials that came with the products. We'll explore the website a little later, but for right now, let's look at the products and packaging themselves. The first generation Hellfire came with a field manual and a copy of an ATF letter from 1990, which stated that, again, this original Hellfire was not a machine gun. Around 2017, the Hellfire Gen 2 came about, complete with some hilarious marketing, again, that we're going to take a look at. For the sake of brevity, let's call this product the V2 for the rest of the video. The V2 is an interesting little contraption. It's a component which limits its linear motion back and forth on the grip of a firearm. The front nubbin backs up the trigger, a foam pad on the rear, and a magnet. 
Of course, there's a fucking magnet. I, I hate this industry. It just kind of sort of keeps it against the trigger. It also features a micro adjustment knob with which many of us in the industry call a screw. Uh, this micro adjustment screw knob snugs it up when you want to fire the gun all normal like. Those of you astute in trigger devices might already see the issue here. Of course, let me reiterate, I believe the ATF was completely wrong about bump stocks from the jump. I also believe that we should be selling AK-74s in vending machines like the founders intended and that the entirety of the code is a bunch of crap. But anyway, we do know that before the bump stocks came the Aikens Accelerator, which was basically a bump stock with a spring that kept the device loaded forward. Bump stocks were actually born out of the accelerator. Uh, basically, bump stocks as we know them were Aikens accelerators without a spring. The issue here is the, the V2 Hellfire seems to me a lot like the accelerator in reverse. The foam seems to act kind of like a spring. It will absorb rearward energy, compress, let your finger kind of remain in the same spot to smack the trigger again as that foam expanded and got your finger back in contact with the trigger. Of course, that's kind of a, a rough e equation there, but uh, again, devil's advocate here. What Worry not though, because the, the V2, like all Hellfire products, came with a certificate of legality. This certificate simply states that titles 18 and 26 of the US code do not apply to the device. It also came with a warning that you must carry the legality card whenever you use or have the device in your possession. Failure to do so can result in your arrest or seizure of your gun. So clearly the legality card has some sort of magic talismanic effect. If you leave the card at home, it cannot repel the laws. It's that simple. Users were further warned that the device must be used with extreme discretion and the use of the product in a foolish manner could cause problems. Finally, the product warns that this may be the last time that you, as a free person living in an independent nation, may have the opportunity to buy or use something like this device. This, of course, was written on a piece of paper that was folded up and included with the device one had presumably just bought. Anyway, uh, I, I, whatever. I'm sure it didn't help this whole situation now with the ATF when Congress lizards Joaquin Castro and Suzanne Bonamici wrote to ATF last month to complain about this device specifically and liken it to a bump stock. It's not unlikely that this letter, plus the fascinating marketing on the part of Rock and Lock, which in many cases referred to it as automatic fire, caused the, the V2 to come into the sights of ATF. I mean, the product's... Uh, I, they even came with certificates of legality. The website repeatedly proclaimed that these items were ATF legal and approved. These are ATF approved, so say the website. Once again, I stress that I do not agree with this determination. I think it's clear that these firearms are, logically speaking, and even legally speaking, when you look at the law, are operating on individual functions of a semi-automatic firearm. However, playing devil's advocate... If you put on your lizard helmet and ignore the text of the law, calling the, the, the Hellfire V2 a machine gun is kind of consistent with the bump stock and Aikens treatment given its manner of operations. That said, again, this was only about that V2 device, not the company's older or newer products. This is another thing I want to stress. And this really bothers me a lot when we get stuff like this. Sometimes people will get all upset that a company will sell a product without ATF approval. ATF does not approve anything with respect to accessories. The Bureau has no jurisdiction or power to do so and has repeatedly recognized this. The only thing it can do is determine whether or not something is a firearm. If it is not a firearm, including, you know, which fire, the definition of a firearm includes machine gun conversion devices, it does not approve or disapprove anything. Even if ATF gives you a letter saying, uh, yeah, I looked at this and it's not a whatever, that letter is not worth the paper it's printed on. If you want a source, see literally everything we've been dealing with for the last five years. <laughs> We're going to go through the website and its hilarious marketing in another video, but as a little preview, I just like to point out some of the pretty juicy irony here. On the clearly handwritten website, which purports to be from a pre-internet era, uh, a pre-internet website certainly is fa fascinating. Uh, you know, maybe maybe he designed it for ARPANET, but it was clear that whoever was writing this page, 
I hope after at least three tall boys of steel reserve was a little different. He repeatedly derided other products, repeatedly proclaiming that he had over 30 years in the business. Fascinating for a site that only came online in 2016. Um, clearly because it's a continuation of the older ventures. And even proclaimed that every other product was illegal with no regard to whether or not this was actually the case. One extreme point of irony is around last year when he refers to forced reset triggers, which he calls forded reset triggers, as ATF illegal, derides the intelligence of anyone who bought one, and says that, again, in his 30 years of experience, bad things will happen to them, and these companies are going to have to rat out their customers, unlike him. Later on, he added text referring to all forwarded reset and binary triggers as illegal. This, of course, was amidst him repeatedly proclaiming the superior legality and functionality of his product, until at one point, the V2 disappeared from the site. In my next video, we're going to go through this, this website. It, it's a lot of fun. Some of the writing there is just too good. It'll be much a much more informal video. Uh, I hope you check that out. But I do want to say that the Hellfire story is, I believe, a lesson for us. When they came for the bump stocks, he did not speak, for he was not the bump stock man. When they came for the FRTs, he did not speak out, for he was not the forwarded reset man. When they didn't come for the binaries, despite him thinking that they did, he did not speak out, for he was not the binary man. And when they came for him, oh how there were far fewer voices left to speak. Remember y'all, it's today the tomorrow me. Always speak out against injustice, and I will live up to my credo. Mr. Trigger Man, you poorly dressed absolute weirdo, if you need help, reach out to me. I will do it. Thanks for tuning in, y'all. Until next time, take care.